Hello everyone. So it's just about to go to be 35 minutes past 10. So we're going to start the webinar. So um, my name is Alex Claro. I am the head of technical for Perdicom. And today we're going to be discussing Wi-Fi networking for transport and logistics. So before we do that, we're going to give a little bit of an overview. So in the introduction to Perdicom, for those of you who may not know who Perdicom are, an overview of transport and logistics vertical and the challenges and solutions in the transport and logistics vertical as well. We're also going to discuss the M510 Ruckus AP, which is actually designed to be a mobile access point that can literally work anywhere in the world using 3G, 4G signals. We're also going to discuss the Ruckus data plane and how you can secure your traffic, ensuring that it's always going to go back to your central HQ encrypted, meaning that no one else has prying eyes over it. And then we're going to discuss the positioning of the Ruckus APs in the transport and leisure vertical, a uh, logistics vertical, sorry, and any questions and answers. So a little bit about Perdicom, for those of you who don't know, Perdicom is a next generation wireless networking and security distributor. We're located in the heart of Oxfordshire. We help our customers and build networks across all of EMEA by offering a true value added service and support as well. And that is all free of charge. What verticals do we work in? Well, we work all the way from hospitality, transport and logistics, which we're discussing today, MDU, education, retail units, small, medium and enterprise and healthcare. We help our resellers, we help our VARs, we help our MSPs, our ISPs and our WISPs, our integrators and anyone who wishes to be a part of the sub-distribution. The only people we don't talk to directly is end users, which means that you guys can make all the money. So our technologies. So we don't just deal with one specific technology, which is the wireless. We deal with wireless and onboarding. So those onboarding platforms like Nomadics, like Encapto. We've got a point to point and point to multi-point scenarios as well, technologies using our Cambium or our Sickly product ranges. We also do our cabling and infrastructure. So Comscope cabling. We also have CERTA UPS. We also have our voice with ASCOM. Analytics and control utilizing Ruckus and Cambium's management platforms. We then, of course, have our Cambium uh, CN matrix switches and our Ruckus ICX switches. And last but not least, we have our security with WatchGuard and Panda technologies as well. So we can go end to end and do a full solution cell for you guys on any project that you may need us to. Then come on our vendors. So I've already mentioned a few, but I'll have a quick recap. We've got Comscope Ruckus for your wireless switching and cabling needs. We have Cambium Networks, again, for all your switching wireless and outdoor point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point needs. We then have Cyclu for any of your millimetre wave, high throughput point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point needs. We have CERTA UPS for any backup power. We have our WatchGuard technologies for all of our security portfolio. And that also now includes Panda as well, so Panda antivirus. We then have ASCOM, which is our voice solution. And I've already mentioned Comscape with our cabling. We have our Encapto Wi-Fi and our Nomadix solution as well. Both of those are aiming to get people onboarded as seamlessly as possible with no effort from the end user. So our value add. Now, every distributor says that they have a value add. We actually believe that we do. We offer a lot of free services, including um, pre-sales, webinars as we're doing today, you know, we'll actually work with you on tenders and discuss any opportunities with you from a technical and a sales perspective to make sure that you are the front runners. We're incredibly flexible. We have flexible finance terms and smart logistics solutions as well. And we also offer accredited training and you will get a dedicated account manager as well. So like I said, we have training and technical support. We have logistics, we can ship anywhere in the world. We have our flexible finance with credit terms. We have our sales team who, with a dedicated account manager for you. And of course, we have our amazing marketing department to help you with any marketing development funds and create you any content that you need for your business tailored towards you. We then have our professional services. So we do all of our site planning for free. We will label access points if you require us to, accredited training, pre-installation site surveys. We'll host NFR kit for you, post-installation site surveys, and of course, commissioning, pre-staging, and line of sight surveys for those challenging outdoor links. So now I've got the Perdicom bit out of the way, we can begin with the overview of transport and logistics vertical. So I've got a few statistics to start with. Transport and leisure CEOs see mobile technologies 
for emerging with customers, cybersecurity tools and data analytics as the three most important areas in which to invest. Approximately 20% of all digital transformation costs will be allocated directly to the supply chain transformation. Basically meaning that the tech, the industry itself is gonna get a lot smarter to improve efficiency across the board. So what are the top five digital trends? So we're now using drones. So we've all seen, if you live in Milton Keynes, they've actually got the little drones and little robots that drive around Milton Keynes delivering Amazon parcels. It speeds up the process by eliminating common operational issues. We've got robotics. So that sorts out the packaging quicker than most humans can and detect any issues and remove that human error element right from day one. We've of course got our cloud integration. So we can provide real-time data specific to distributed locations and to people across all geographic locations. And then you've obviously got your tracking. So vehicle sensors to uh, evaluate routes and provide the fastest route to destination. And then you've got your predictive networks. So managing and accelerating productivity within the supply chain. So what are the challenges and solutions in the transport and logistics vertical? Well, the first one is resource tracking and management. So if a business doesn't have dedicated or detailed real-time visibility into available tracking at any given point, well then it can become a strain on the business sales and impact the customer satisfaction because the customer may be left in the lurch. Other challenges are cutting transportation costs and logistics time. So fuel is increasing day by day and that can be a significant part in the overall cost. Um, and that would also result in customers having to pay a higher cost. So if you're only shipping half a load out the door, but well then you've got a lot of empty space on that trailer or wagon going empty around the UK. And then you've got manpower management. So as the transport and logistics industry continues to grow, the need for a faster and more organized management system and faster delivery of that is essential. So, and that includes being able to log all incoming and outgoing products as quick as humanly possible. So we need to overcome these challenges. So resource tracking and management. Bless me. We have cloud-based technologies that can provide real-time data and can be accessible to the whole team regardless of the location. Now, that is Ruckus Analytics for you. So Ruckus Analytics can actually look at your entire wireless network and switching network as well, and work out if there's any problems with any of your Wi-Fi hardware in real time and actually suggest possible fixes and what the issues were. So you can ensure that your system is 100% operational all year long and actually fix an issue before it comes a bigger problem. You've then got custom transportation cost and logistics. So autonomous tracking and AI can be incorporated into vehicles to track potential real-time data and routes and alternative routes to cut out roadblocks. So most vehicles obviously have sat navs, um, but they do also need live data. So some products out there, such as Waze or Google Maps, are great at doing that, but they consume a lot of bandwidth, which means you've got to have you know, 3G or 4G on a mobile device or even in the lorry or truck or whatever it is. So you could use the Ruckus product that we're going to discuss in a moment called the M510 to actually have all devices connect to a single access point and leverage that access point's data and SIM card instead of having three or four different SIM cards in each lorry to actually get the data onto the product or get the data that you need into the driver's hands. You then got manpower management. So robotic and drone technology has been adopted in the logistics industry. Robotic machines would help sorting through incoming and outgoing packages faster. But again, you need to ensure you've got a reliable Wi-Fi network for that. Everything's more and more wireless in the warehouse. You need to make sure you've got enough coverage. Make sure the robots, even if they're down the end of an aisle, will still have a decent signal to send the data back to say, to say that they've picked an item and what item they have picked and then allocate that to an order. So moving on to Comscope and Ruckus and how we can help you. So Perdicom and Comscope have got a long successful relationship. Obviously Comscope is, or Ruckus is now a part of Comscope. So we've got a decade of success. Working together for the last decade, bringing a deep understanding of each other's business and our partners. We've obviously won Distributor of the Year many, many times. If actually, in fact, it's a sixth year on the road. We've got embedded support. So we've got direct contact with Ruckus and their engineers if we ever need to go above and beyond what we can offer. And we can actually tailor and value add to you, support you with training days, events, 
and and yet as well as technical sales team who understand your business. So moving on to the M510 access point. So this is a really powerful access point. It's a mobile indoor access point, but it could be on a train, it could be on a lorry, it could go anywhere you need to. It's got, it will provide you a wireless connection and it actually has a 3G, 4G backhaul modem built in with GPS support. So the, why this is beneficial? Well, you can have a single access point on your train, your lorry, you know, wherever it may be, even in a field, for example, if you really wanted to. Um, as long as it's got power and as long as it can have a, wireless, a 3G, 4G connection, you can manage it remotely. Better yet, as well as allowing you to have mobile Wi-Fi, providing superior management and performance without requiring any additional cable runs, it's got carry grade management with our virtual smart zone. It's got enterprise Wi-Fi coverage because it is a true ruckus access point. And it's expandable with IoT modules. So if you ever start looking at IoT, it's already ready for that. So how can it be used? Well, it's suited for deployment on trains and lorries, as I've said, distribution chains, and even temporary locations where ethernet connectivity is absent, but you can get a power. The AP is designed to be used wherever LTE service is available. It has a one gigabit ethernet port, so it can access the WAN connection. And I've even seen some of these used as a failover link for a main internet line. So your main internet feed goes down and the M510 is actually used as the backhaul instead. And because it's mobile, it will work everywhere. Now, the benefit of this is because it has a 3G, 4G connection, you can actually ensure that the data is secure because what this graphic here shows you is, okay, it's showing retailers and offices and schools, for example, but the data plane itself is a way of allowing the data that's going onto the access point to be sent to a central location, meaning all the data can be tunneled to your data center or your business effectively, ensuring that no data is actually sent roguely into the outside world over 3G or 4G, because it's all encrypted in a GRE IPsec tunnel. So it's a very clever way and a very powerful way to get data into your data center effectively securely. And this will work anywhere in the world. All it needs is an internet connection. I actually have one of these at my house. And as I speak to you right now in my house, I am sitting on the ruckus data plane to make sure I'm behind my corporate firewall. So it's incredibly powerful. It means that you can have multiple devices connected to it, whether that be a mobile phone, a laptop, any of the vehicle tracking systems or train tracking systems, all connected to that access point, sending all the data directly back to you and not being leaked out into the big bad world. So how do we position ruckus access points in the transport and logistics vertical? Well, we've also got all of ruckus's main technologies. So we've got Beamflex Plus. And effectively think of this like a torch, focusing the energy towards each and every client. We've got channel fly to make sure we can adapt to the best channel and best operation for that. We can adapt our antenna based on a per packet basis, which means it's more effective and responsive. If you've got lots of access points in a warehouse, for example, we can adapt the power and range to make sure we're not interfering with one another and adapt to our environment live on, on fly. And if we also work with transient, transient client management, so it prevents clients being disrupted from the network as they roam between access points, as well as offering airtime decongestion. So we effectively manage our radio more effectively by suppressing frames which you don't need to send, meaning we can spend more time sending data to wireless clients than we are just managing our own access point. And of course, we can steer the clients in the right direction in terms of connecting to the most relevant uh, frequency, whether that's 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. So being Flex Plus, as I said, in a warehouse environment, you probably need less access points. It will dynamically adapt to the environment and it will often provide a better and stronger connection compared to our um, competitors. We can, of course, optimize the density and management as well. So because we can hook into our virtual smart zone or our zone director, or even be Ruckus Unleashed, we can manage anything from anywhere in the world and see how much data is being passed, what data is being passed, um, and make any changes on the fly remotely without having to worry about any of the access points coming back to the main office. As long as they've got an internet connection, we can manage them anywhere in the world. So I've spoken now for a good 20 minutes. So are there any questions at all?
Yes, it can be. So um, we actually offer a heat mapping service as well. So what we tend to do with Beamflex is it depends on the racking. We will tend to use either a 120 degree or a 30 degree sectorized antenna. Um, however, there are times where you could use nominee directional AP and it really does depend on how far space the racking is. If the racking is quite far away or quite spaced out, then actually Beamflex will be at your advantage because it will allow you to go further as well. So if you've got a very, very long racking space, then you actually need one AP that could probably cover the entire length of the warehouse down that aisle. So we've got a question here from Frank. So is a data plane a separate services and what is it needed for? So it is a separate service. Um, it is a separate feature on the smart zone itself. And basically it's a way to tunnel all the traffic back from your access point to your central location, to your head office. So if you're on a, say you've got an access point on a train or a lorry and you don't want them to use their own 3G, 4G signal, you want them to actually ensure they can access corporate resources, then you can actually connect to the access point and it will tunnel all of your traffic back to your head office, ensuring that that person is behind the corporate firewall and they're protected, for example. Does that answer your question, Frank? Perfect. Any more questions at all, guys? Go on, Frank, you've got lots. Keep them keep on coming. So yeah, we do have, um, there's actually two SIM cards in the uh, access point, so we can fail over. We don't do bonding as in data bonding, but if one SIM card has a weak signal, we can fail over to the other SIM card. So you may have one on Vodafone and one SIM card on O2, for example. Um, it doesn't support eSIMs. Unfortunately, it does support physical SIM cards. Um, at this moment in time, no, but I can ask our ruckus uh, SEs as well and just double check and see if there's anything on the roadmap for an updated version of the M510 for you. So I will follow up with that and we'll get an answer back to you. Um, so Frank's asking what particular problems are there in the market that we can solve by using ruckus? So um, obviously with our adaptive channels and our adaptive antenna, um, we can actually go further and work in more challenging environments. So a warehouse, for example, is generally a big Faraday cage because it's made of solid metal. And you know there could be anything on those warehouse racking, whether it's metal, whether it's uh, liquids in there or whatever's being stored. So Ruckus's patented Beamflex technology will allow you to overcome the interference and allow you to go further as well. Um, and then when the actual mobile sector, um, when we're talking about the actual transportation and moving objects, well, the benefit there is that if you've got an access point that can talk to a 3G, 4G connection and tunnel the data back to a central location if needs be, it means you don't have to have multiple SIM cards for all of the devices on that moving platform. So a lorry, for example, may have, the driver may have an iPad, may have a laptop in there as well, um, so we can sign off jobs, et cetera, and a, you know, a handheld PDQ scanner. Um, so by having it all connected to one access point, it means you don't have multiple mobile contracts on the go at once. You just have one for the access point. Everything connects to that access point, and then that access point will send the data back to wherever it needs to go. It can be put in external IP65 enclosures if you wish to do so. Um, so again, and it also has a GPS antenna module on it as well on the access point. Any more questions at all, guys? Oh, sorry, I've just seen here one. Um, how do you power the mobile access point from Edward? Um, so Edward, you can power it either via PoE, so it, you can have a power injector, or it can actually be powered via a DC uh, power point. So um, in the train or lorry, for example, if you've got a DC inverter, which most do, then you can actually power it via that. And it's actually got a dedicated DC input and it's also got a standard PoE input as well. So you've got multiple ways, whichever one suits your environment better. So you can connect more than four devices. Um, so the access point itself can actually have uh, over 256 devices connected to it at once. And that's just a single access point. Um, so uh, Frank's asked the question about only having four devices. You can connect more than that to it completely we've done a test and we had 50 and then we were actually run out of devices to connect to it so you can have a, a, a more than adequate amount for a mobile platform to be connected to it uh, so frank's also asking if it does poe pass through the access point does not do poe pass through however uh, it does have two ethernet ports 
So you can use one to power the device and you can use the additional PoE port to have a device hardwired into it, for example. So I have seen it and I've actually done this at events before where we had the access point powered by PoE, well, a power injector. Um, and then we had the secondary ethernet port going into a switch to power for a sub AV system that needed to be handled differently. Steve Brody, great question. I'll get back to you on that because I'll need to pull out the certifications because I can't remember on the top of my head. Um, so Steve was asking what certifications does it have for use on railways? So I will find that out for you and come back to you. Any more questions at all, guys? How will it make us all rich, Frank? Um, I can't answer that question, um, but it can certainly ease your total cost of ownership um, in terms of being more flexible in the grand scheme of things, not having to have mo multiple mobile data contracts on the go for all the mobile devices, being able to keep your data secure as well if you do use the data plane tunnel. So it's all about lowering that total cost of ownership and making it more flexible in the long run. Okay, well, I'll hang around for a couple more moments, guys. And if there's any more questions, fire them away. But otherwise, thank you all for watching. And of course, if you have any questions, please drop us a line um, or an email address to ruckus at purdy.com. And if you need to get in touch, our direct dial is 01488 647 647. And look forward to hearing from you all.